Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, when I was scouring eBay the other day for some graphics card bargains, I came across something that struck me as unusual. The RX 580 from AMD. Now the 580 itself isn't an unusual nor rare card. I've dealt with a fair few of them during my time here on YouTube. But what struck me as odd about this one, aside from the size, was the fact that I've never seen one of these before. I can't even find a picture of another one of these on Google. And for the past 24 hours or so, I've been trying to work out just where this thing came from. I've been looking all over the internet, and I'm still not 100% certain. But let's talk about the specs of this thing first of all. So, it is an 8GB RX 580. It features two DVI ports here and a mini display port. One 6-pin connector requirement here. And the card itself, according to GPU-Z, has a TDP of 135 watts, which is pretty different to most 580s you'd find out there. We've also got a single fan on the front here, and the card itself features a lower memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second. Now, I've been using it today for three or four hours, gaming, and it stays pretty cool under load as well. It idles at about 30 degrees and makes its way up to about 60, 65, something like that. So after doing a little bit of digging, apparently this AMD OEM card is used by HP in some of their Omen gaming systems. I first thought that it could be used by Dell, considering the red PCB. That's something I've seen before in a lot of other Dell systems. Even when I tried to Google one of those, I tried to get some pictures from the inside of one of those machines. I couldn't find one that looked exactly like this. I saw one with a blue PCB, um, and the specs were slightly different as well. Who really knows the origins of this card? If you do, if you've got one that looks like this, then please let me know down below in the comments because it has been racking my brain. But for now, let's see what it can do. Kicking things off with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we set things to the very high preset. Well, actually the game set things to the very high preset. And we were seeing around 45 frames per second during the benchmark run at 1080p. Now nothing else was changed, we left the game on the preset that it had selected itself and uh, let the benchmark run a few times. Now I tested it a few times for fairness sake and 45 was the average of all three runs. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is pretty demanding and results will vary depending on where you are on the map. Now Battlefield 5 did seem a little low, but we were still averaging 70 frames per second. That's not a bad result, it's just not as good as I would expect from a normal 580. If I'm honest, you should be seeing closer to 80 frames per second. But then again, if you're playing at 1080p on a 60Hz monitor, you will be able to easily achieve and maintain 60 frames per second during whatever level you may choose to play. Battlefield 5 tends to be pretty well optimised, it runs fairly well on a wide variety of hardware and this little card was no exception. So Crisis, we may have gone a bit overboard with the settings, I chose 1080p as I did throughout and I made the mistake of selecting the highest possible anti-aliasing settings. Now standing still, things were absolutely fine but as soon as we moved, as soon as we saw some enemies pop up on screen. Um, things started getting a little bit stuttery and the game eventually just ended up crashing to the desktop. This occurred a couple of times, I guess these settings were too much for the card to handle, but bumping the anti-aliasing down a little bit seemed to resolve this. Now I don't know about you, I've mentioned this before, but I just cannot control my vehicles in Dirt Rally 2.0, Dirt Rally 2, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter what you call it, all I know is that the cars are impossible to steer. Maybe it's just because I'm using a controller instead of a wheel. Who knows? Performance-wise though, well, it ran very well. This game really does look very nice with the very high preset enabled. Not quite as good as games such as Forza Horizon, for example, but I think it holds its own pretty well, and it handled itself very nicely on this little card too. Now would it really be a benchmark video without Fortnite? I'm not a massive fan of the game myself, I'll admit, but I know you guys like to see it. 
Feel free to turn things down to high if you want to see a few extra frames and ensure that you don't drop at all below 60 because that did happen on one or two occasions. But for the most part, Fortnite will run very well at full HD on this card. And especially when paired with something like an i5-8400 that I'm using here, these CPUs of course are dropping in price ever since the Ryzen 3000 series lineup launched too. Now for Far Cry New Dawn, we were using a mix of the high and ultra settings to achieve around 70 FPS once again. This was a pretty decent result. I noticed a few moments of slowdown here and there, uh, perhaps when running through smoke, things like that, when a lot of enemies appeared on screen. But all in all, it was a pretty decent experience for the most part. Oh, well, now it's time for Metro Exodus. Now this game will absolutely melt your PC should you turn things up to the higher settings but if you want to run it on say medium like I'm doing here then you'll find yourself having a pretty decent experience even with mid-range graphics cards. This could be considered the new crisis in terms of how it performs on some hardware but here with the RX 580 it seems to do okay providing you don't set your expectations too high. Um, as well as your graphical settings in fact. Rage 2 will also run very nicely. I'm a bit obsessed with this game at the moment. I really look forward to the benchmark tests just so that I can play Rage 2 <laughs> and I end up getting distracted but you should have no problem with hitting 60 frames per second or thereabouts on a card like this. Finally we've got Grand Theft Auto 5. It is a slightly older game but it's one that a lot of you still request I benchmark because it's still very popular. Now I tend to test the single player mode. I don't know if you'd rather me test the online multiplayer mode but in single player you should see a very nice frame rate and that shouldn't differ too much when you're online either. We're using the very high settings here with MSAA turned off. So I have a little bit of an update after posting a picture of the card along with the specs on Reddit. A lot of you guys over there were pretty certain it was from an HP Omen machine and a couple of people said that they did have this in their HP system too. Some people were saying should it really be called an RX 580 considering the slightly different specs. It does have the same core count as a standard RX 580 but the clock speeds and the memory speeds are a little different so I guess that's down to personal opinion. All I know is it performs okay at 1080p achieving 60 frames per second at least a lot of the time but it's hard to find. It probably won't give you as good performance as a normal or regular RX 580 at least from what I've seen today though when or if it does appear on the market it's likely that you'll see it at a pretty reduced price in comparison to a 580 because of what it is and the system that it came out of. With all that said then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.